Let me speak a little bit about how music has been used to address pain virtually since the beginning of time. If we look in the Bible, we see an account of David and Saul and the harp being soothing. Um, if we take that up to the modern moment, we know that when people are frustrated and have anxiety, they're stuck in traffic, they turn on the radio. So I think these are everyday accounts of where we're understanding how music, the informed use of music in a music therapy case, but, but music, even as an adjunct, histologically uh, can increase and enhance a feeling of resiliency and actually helps people actualize uh, resiliency in their everyday life. And I believe that resiliency is one of the major influences in how people can combat pain. This is what needs to be studied more, and this is what I like to speak about, is the impact of live music and how it can change in one moment, in one rhythm, someone's perception of pain. How can we expand the way that doctors are thinking about treating pain? How can music influence medicine from assessment to treatment in goal planning? The reason why music therapy is effective as a model of psychotherapy is that the therapist has the capacity to interrelate and feel and experience the pain that someone is having at the moment it's occurring. In every other kind of modality, a doctor asks a question, a patient answers. Question, answer, description. When you're playing music with someone and you're in that moment of making rhythm together, you have rhythm, you have dynamic, you have timbre, and you are actually in their pain with them. You're experiencing it as an expression. So you can actually alter and entrain in that moment and tweak exactly how they're experiencing it. The most frequent question asked of me is what kind of music can help address pain? And it's kind of like asking a doctor what kind of medicine can help a person's pain. Uh, there is, thankfully, no one kind of music. Certainly there are principles that we've learned about in evidence-based practice of music and medicine, such as um, that music and pain travel along similar neural pathways. Therefore, when someone's engaging in music, it shuts off the pain perception and response. But to really understand what kind of music to use, the therapist needs to take a full assessment. That assessment includes how the person is before they came into the clinic or hospital. Who are they in their normal, their norm life world? Second, how have they endured pain in the past? What is the history of trauma? Is there any? How does the trauma influence pain? Three, what is their cultural preference? Jaco's coming to our hospital, I think, in a couple of weeks, and they're very concerned about culture. Um, we know certain things that we can do and can't do according to culture, but there are many, many more nuances, not just if someone is from another country or how they were raised. Every person is their own culture. Every person should be looked at as a cultural influence and universe. Uh, so we need to understand how pain is addressed in their culture. And the beauty of this is we can also understand how music is addressed in their culture. And when you combine those two influences, you can really have individually tailored care. We know that music is important to the body because the first thing a practitioner does when they do an assessment with a person is they listen to their heartbeat. The first thing a person does when they wake up in the morning is look for a clock. From the moment of birth, the first heartbeat, which is in the body, to our managing our activities of daily living, we're, we're dealing with our heart 
and our external clock of time. Rhythm is essential to the body's systems, all the body's systems, the firing of neurons. I think the most important thing that we need to realize is that music can affect each of these systems independently and interchangeably. I think this is why cardiac clinics are now being combined with pulmonary. It's cardiac pulmonary that we breathe and our heart rhythms interchange. So with music, we're dealing with a symphony of sounds, thoughts, and spiritual and cultural influences. And the reason why music provides special access is because we all have a history and a relationship with music. So it is a healthy part of our existence from the moment we're born till the end of our life when someone sings a hymn at our funeral. So how can we make music interact in a conscious way? Uh, this is the work of pain, having people do some of the techniques that are non-pharmacological, such as deep breathing, imagery, yoga, um, but the more cutting edge ones, which are starting to be seen in the research, are the impact of rhythm, such as um, drumming. We see this in fire walking in different parts of the world, body piercing. They don't use anesthesia for those things. They use rhythm, and the people feel no pain. Why? Because when someone engages in music activity, the brain's response to pain shuts off. And we know this from Melzek and Wall and the gate control theory. Mm -hmm.